All right. Looks like everything is showing live. Okay, cool. All right. So nobody's in here just yet, but if people start rolling in, um, I'm talking about whether or not the concept of gaming is in a rut currently or if it's just gamers. So uh, first thing I'm going to say, um, and for those who don't know me, I'm Andre, but I'm known as the Game Idea Guy down there in that lower corner right there. You'll see all that. But again, here is the subject of the show for the evening or the afternoon, I should say. Is gaming in a rut? Because I've seen this sentiment floated about in a few different places now. And it, it, it comes off because it seems like people are bored and they're not hyped up and excited for a bunch of major releases currently. And that's what it feels like to me. It feels like there, there's this boredom over there not being a lot of major game releases like by big publishers that are supposed to be massive scale games. Which you would think more people would want that to be the case currently because we've said multiple times over that people need to start scaling back. Companies need to start scaling back and allowing themselves to have one longer periods for development, not pay as much money out to have their games developed. So you would think that people would want gaming to be in this rut and again, scaled back. But that's not happening is people recognize what the issue is. And then they'll go ahead and still complain about things not being the way that they think they should be. And then that in and of itself becomes an issue. So I'm like, <clears throat> really, the question being asked, is gaming in a rut? I feel like gaming is in a rut. Not me personally, but what people have been saying. If you feel like gaming is in a rut, have you ever stop to think about maybe it's you feeling that way. And yes, multiple people can feel the same way about something and it doesn't necessarily make that thing true. It doesn't make it untrue, but it doesn't automatically mean that that thing is correct. And when it comes down to it and I I hate I see these conversations playing out Generally, what I'm seeing is that people are bored. You're bored. You're not seeing the next hype release come coming. You're not getting information on Nintendo's next platform just yet. And so it feels like things are in a rut. And I do blame this on the gaming industry as a whole. Partially, I, I blame it partly on the gaming industry and I blame it partly on the gaming community. The gaming industry for their hand in overhyping everything to hell since seventh generation. You don't have to overhype everything that you have in the pipeline. You don't have to talk about every new game that you're working on as if it is the second coming. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is present your game in the best, most honest light you can provide for it. That's it. That's all you have to do in order to make people interested in your game. And the industry took this took to this position of overhyping everything, which did lead to sales up front. But as more people got into playing those games, we heard a lot of complaints about stuff being broken, things not working well, and people being generally disappointed in a lot of bigger scale releases, which ended up in a lot of those releases not making the money that they were supposed to, which 
then made people cautious of larger scale releases, which is why something like the Tomb Raider reboot didn't do very well or didn't do well enough to make money to justify its release. And that that's something that has to do with the overhyping of everything. So with with that and, and people playing into it, this back and forth thing where people play into it, then they're cautious about it, then they play back into it. We're just into the side of the cycle where they play back into it. But now as far as... It's my son. Now as far as uh, the gaming community and gamers in general talking about they feel like the industries or not the industry but gaming in general is in a rut because you kept playing into the hype machine you kept playing into it you kept feeding into it and you got to a point where you just ended up burning out because there's no reason that currently could y'all chill out I don't know what they're they're doing, but they're playing together, my kids. Um, but people got so rolled up into the hype trains that they they really just burnt themselves out. That that's really what happened. They got themselves so hyped up, so into it that now everybody's burning out because there's nothing to sustain it. And honestly, for gaming, this year needs to be a quieter year. We still have a bunch of stuff releasing. Like you have indie games releasing, you have smaller, smaller games releasing from some, from some of the uh, bigger developers or publishers. <laughs> uh, yeah, they they probably are. It sounded like it because there was some stuff crashing over there, and then we heard screams. Uh, the only thing we were missing was a uh, uh, finish him or finish her because the kids. But where where it bugs me when people ask this question or say things like gaming is in a rut is are you looking at the full totality of things or are you just thinking about how you feel in the moment? Because if you're looking at how how, if you're thinking about just how you feel in the moment, which again, multiple people could feel that way, but you're not looking at the full scale of things. A whole bunch of big hit games came out within the last two years at a highly consistent rate due to the pandemic holding a lot of stuff back. And there was constant, constant, constant hype during that period of time once the ball got rolling for that. But now we're in the downtime, the moment to get a breath from it. And the first thing people say is, oh, it's a, gaming's in a rut. No, there's no rut. It's things have calmed down. You, you went from the high down to the low. There will be another high in the future. It just hasn't happened yet. You, you hit the peak and then slid down into the valley. All right, see, I like this comment. So I can only speak for myself, but I haven't been in, as interested to play any of the new games. Still good games, but I just can't and don't really feel like keeping up with everything. That's that's what I'm talking about. It's like so many people are trying to... Are y'all arguing over the toys again? Yep. One moment so I can uh, calm them down. But people are overhyping themselves or getting too hyped up and trying to keep up with the Joneses and is causing a major issue for them when they can't do it. But one sec.
All right. So with people trying their best to keep up with the Joneses and nothing big to hype up or talk about coming along that anybody knows of, people feel down. They feel bored. They feel like they're not getting anything currently. When the majority of people in the last couple of years should have massive backlogs that they they need to get into. But more than likely won't because the backlogs that they have aren't the, the popular things that are that everybody wants to talk about. Major thing is if you have games, go play your games. Go play your old stuff that you haven't touched in forever. Or play some of that stuff that you have sitting around that you haven't touched at all. I I still have games back for the PS2 that I have yet to have actually played. And I do plan on doing that. I actually want to stream. I actually want to stream those games, but I have to want to have to locate my PS2. It, it's a uh, packaged up in a box somewhere. I have to locate it and, and get all my equipment out for it to do that. And I, and I already have the, the stuff to connect it to my uh, capture card and my HDMI, so that's not a problem. I just need to get my stuff out, which with my kids, I, part, part of me doesn't want to do that because I don't want them to get their hands on it and potentially break something because uh, people on Twitter have, have felt my pain a few times <laughs> where some stuff got broken or uh, there was a complete erasure of data that I can't recover, unfortunately. I mean, when I'm talking about data, I'm talking about saves and stuff, but eh. it's not the major thing that hold on. Uh, ha- had to stop my son from uh, pulling a potential cord that could have dropped a monitor on his head. So I'm <laughs> like. Yeah, we. I don't need to, to rush you to the hospital because you pulled down a monitor. But <clears throat> when when I catch when I catch up with people, I'm like, and that's, it's a lot of people I've seen have this uh, come to the, this as a conclusion. That's what makes it weird to me. And again, maybe it's just that there are so many people that are, that are dependent on the hype train that they don't know how to exist without it. And once gaming got a little bit more popular, that that really became the thing. Like I said, that started during seventh generation. Like, yeah, before then, you you you'd have people get hyped up about stuff, or you'd be talking with your friends. But that was more locally. That was before everybody became perpetually online. Like seven, right around the time seventh generation happened, is where everyone became perpetually online. Like right after that, because smartphones became really popular. And once smartphones became popular, everyone was basically online almost 24-7. So I'm I'm assuming that game companies were trying to keep everybody hyped up and keep it going. Make sure I didn't accidentally mute my mic on here. Uh, Oh, what? There we go. <laughs> this will calm down some of the storming. Um, but once things got perpetually online and a lot of people got caught up in the hype trains that were constantly happening, it's understandable that you would, at times where there's a lull in all the hyping, feel like nothing's going on or feel like there is a rut or an empty space. But if you just generally like enjoy gaming anyway, so like maybe if you're a multi-platform owner or you at least have one of the platforms and PC, you honestly shouldn't have a whole lot to complain about because you should have the games that you want to play or you should have access to them in general. Unless it's like a money issue, then that's a whole separate discussion. But I'm just talking about in general you should be able to know exactly what you're looking for, be able to find it and go play it. 
but this also had i would also say this has to do with people looking for what's socially accepted to be able to play eh. some people like myself tend to play what we like or what or go to after games that look interesting to us there's a lot of people that don't do that now there's a lot of people that only go after a game if it reviews well or if someone who's popular says that they like it or someone that they know likes it those are the only times that they will go for for a video game and i think that's mostly because a lot of people didn't come from the era of you really had to understand what the game was you had to go pil- pilfering through different magazines uh viewing different game shows and stuff like that so a lot of people got dragged into ooh look at the trailer for this game that doesn't show any gameplay but tells us it's going to be a great game to run into disappointment is generally i've gotten to the point where for me personally i can generally tell if i'm going to like something or not there are some games that catch me catch me off guard that i end up liking that I, I wouldn't have been interested in. And then there are some that I was interested in that I found that I didn't like later. But in general, I, I like to try out a bunch of different things and attempt to see what works for me. Because I'm, I'm not beholden to a specific gameplay style. I'm not beholden to a specific controller type. I'm not beholden to a specific way to game. I enjoy taking my time and learning how each thing works and getting engrossed in it in a way that allows me to have fun. Because if that was the case, I could never have gotten used to using this. I could have never gotten used to using this. I would only be able to use this or something like it. But my, my ability to play with multiple different styles of controllers at different engage with different ways of gameplay allows me to enjoy the medium far more than a lot of people would. And I don't say, I know I've just said that and it sounds like I'm being elitist, but I don't say it from the context of being elitist. I say it from the context of someone, one who has an overactive imagination as is, who likes to engage with a lot of things but also because I think that trying out different stuff in gaming helps the medium more than it hurts it. When we have everything be too much the same, it starts to stagnate, which again happened multiple times over. And apparently people still don't learn this lesson. And I think that's also a part of the reason that people feel gaming is in a rut. Like, you have so much stuff currently, like right now, that's coming out that feels the same. Even if they they don't operate in the same way, they have a similar look and aesthetic, which feels the same. Which was another major problem during 7th Generation on both PlayStation and Xbox and, and with PC. Unless you were playing on a Wii or you actively searched out the lower budget titles, most of what you saw felt identical. Oh, hey, Sarah, what's up? (laughs) Um, But I try to, I personally, again, try to enjoy a lot of different stuff when it comes down to gaming. I, I don't think that anybody should be beholden to one platform or one brand specifically based upon the name or convention of the brand. If there is stuff that 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 brand makes that you like, go enjoy it. I was a Sega kid growing up. Even though I had a Sega Genesis and a Super Nintendo, I was a Sega kid growing up. I preferred my Sega to the Super Nintendo. I loved my Sega versus the Super Nintendo. I enjoyed both of them, but I preferred to have my Sega Genesis over the Super Nintendo. One, because the Sega Genesis could technically do more things with the wider variety of stuff that came out for it, like the Sega CD and the 32X. But also because 
most of the stuff that Sega did was more in line with what I like. Back then, I preferred Sonic over, over Mario. I preferred Streets of Rage over Final Fight. But that didn't that didn't stop me from enjoying stuff like Run Saber on the Super Nintendo or playing Mega Turrican and Super Turrican. It didn't stop me from enjoying Turtles in Time and then going to play Hyperstone Heist. And I think that that's the thing that's missing now. It, one, we have too much stuff that's the same, and all platforms get basically the same stuff. And two, people don't spend their time actually enjoying and actively engaging with gaming as a medium in general. And if if time has passed for something to be popular, nobody wants to touch it unless that thing has a resurgence or you're a part of the speed running community because they do a majorly good job with keeping people up on different games, older games, speed running community. If you, if you are interested in seeing somebody manhandle a game, that's where you go to see that, but you will, but you'll see the speed running community play a lot of games that are more obscure and different than other people will. And there'll be people to, to bring games that are older up to popularity because they take the time to learn those games in and out. And I think honestly, that type of enthusiasm is what people need to have for gaming, but it shouldn't be based upon if we have a new release coming out right now, it should be based upon, yo, this game is amazing. I'm interested in it. I'm going to play this. I, I have Sonic superstars. I have yet to play that game. I'm probably going to crack. I'm probably going to get into it this weekend, but I have yet to play it. I want to play play through Super Mario Wonder. Uh, I got to play through Princess Peach Showtime. Then on top of that, I have several, again, several PS2 games I want to go back through and play. I have, I have the James Cameron Dark Angel that was based on the TV show. I have not played and played through that game at all. I think I played it a couple times and I haven't really do- dove into it, but there's another game with the same name that was a dungeon crawler. I got more than halfway through that game and it didn't get to finish playing it. And I eventually plan on doing that. Like I said, I'm planning to live stream a bunch of my stuff. Um, once I get everything I can hooked up, but that's what I'm planning to do. Eventually. Uh, because I'm going to be streaming more often anyhow. I could I could see where you, you'd say 6th Gen was definitely the best gen as far as like quality of production. I, I'd i agree with that. But my heart and soul is still with uh, the Sega Saturn, which I feel like was underrepresented and also mistreated by the, the parent company of it. Because <laughs> I have... And when I say I have a bunch of Sega Saturn games, I have Japanese imports. If I, it's not clearing up, but this is a Symphony of the Night for Sega Saturn. I have a bunch of stuff over here for my Sega Saturn. I got Virtual Cop One and Two is in here, even though I only have the case for one. The better version of X Men versus Street Fighter. The one that's more like that, almost completely arcade perfect. And game, other games that were dogged on, like Sonic R. This was dogged on back in the day. The Japanese version of House of the Dead because I could not find the American one at all. At all. Or more or less my brother couldn't because the American version of it sold out, but the Japanese game is identical with the English voices and everything. And Marvel Superheroes vs. Street Fighter. The other arcade perfect version of that game that wasn't on PS1. <laughs> but I think, honestly, a lot of people... <laughs> why you why you, had, why you had to strike me like that? Why you, <laughs> why you had to strike me like that? 
And, and that's not true. The Genesis was successful. They just did not know how to hold on to that success. But they made good platforms. <laughs> they made good platforms. Every platform that they made was potentially very good. Sega Master System actually lasted a pretty long time. It just didn't last that long in the U.S. Uh, Sega Master System, Genesis, yeah. those were good. Game Gear was basically like carrying a Master System around in your pocket. But it didn't do as well as Game Boy. Um, Sega Saturn didn't do all that great because Sega jumped the gun, for lack of better words, for a couple things. I actually have to redo a video discussion I did about a what-if scenario for the Saturn if it was successful because I got a couple facts wrong I have to fix. Um, Dreamcast was a good machine, but it got overlooked because of what Sega did prior to its release so it was like uh at that by this point y'all didn't y'all didn't screwed up goodwill you get lucky if y'all get anything and and both the drink the dreamcast lasted a, until around 2007 or 8 in japan it was still getting official releases up until like 2007 or 2008 and i got sidetracked <laughs> um but that 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 really did hurt me a little bit though. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That that hurt that hurt a lot because there was there was some good stuff on those those game systems that just never really a lot of people didn't see. That I really wish that they would dig back into and hopefully that's what Sega is doing um with this this run of games that they're playing. What are y'all doing? This is not Tekken, this is real life. <laughs> Kids getting into combat sports already. Not even four years old. Uh, but to get back onto track with the actual subject, is gaming in a rut? My opinion, based on all the things going on, no. Gaming is not in a rut. What is in a rut is the attitudes and opinions of gamers in the social media space. And I say that specifically because people outside of social media or people that don't pay much attention to gaming on social media that are interested in video games, they don't care. They see that there's stuff in the store that they can buy that they want, or they see that there are games on the storefronts that they can buy that they want. They're going to go get them. They're not going to sit here and worry about whether or not something's popular. Well, technically they do, but they don't worry about it in the same way. They don't have the same level of FOMO that, oh, I have to be on this game now because everybody else is on it. Generally, they don't care. And if you have a company that's putting out prop, what? Why? Why are you bashing the block? Hold on. What? Okay. My son's having to fit with his uh his mega blocks. Sorry for anyone's ears that are listening to this with earbuds or headphones. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was nothing I could do about that moment. Um, but in general, I think that if people stopped looking to social media for people's opinions about things when it comes down to gaming or the games industry as a whole, and they just went for the stuff that they actually liked and cared about or were interested in gaming would probably turn around very quickly. We probably have companies not blowing budgets that, that skyrocket into the hundreds of millions, which it isn't even worth doing. And then try to sell those games for 60 to $70 
and then have to tack on special editions or deluxe editions and not even make back enough money. That's why, like it. That's why, like I said, this is one of those things that sits odd to me. Like, we recognize that gaming budgets have overblown; they have skyrocketed too much. But the things that are the solutions to fixing those problems, or fixing that problem specifically, nobody wants. Like Sony potentially releasing the PS5 Pro is one of the most ridiculous things that they could do right now because no one is properly even using the PS5 currently. So why would you then release a higher tiered version of your machine, which means people have to spend more money on the development of their games for your platform and you expect them to make a special version for your better version of your platform to waste more money. We need companies to start scaling back instead of scaling up. <laughs> like Scale back. Scale back to where the current price model is sustainable. Scale down, and then you can produce more. You can produce more, and you can sell your games at their proper price. And if you have to make a discount to sit, make more sales, you still make money. And uh, Chanel, welcome in. Yep that that would be the reason because that's the reason that. The PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X even exist because Sony and Microsoft didn't know what Nintendo was doing, so they had to make higher tiered versions of the machines that didn't sell, that didn't sell all that well, in comparison to the base versions of their platform. Well, the base and the slim versions of their platform, and it really didn't improve anything for gaming as much as people love to say 4k was this godsend for gaming it really wasn't it didn't do anything to make the medium better if anything things got worse after 4k was in introduced what now what's wrong Oh, did you pinch your finger? Come here. Come here. Come here. Let, let, let's chill the wine. Come here. Come here. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. You are okay. A little pinch on your finger is not the end of the world. You're okay. You're good. Yeah, well, you're okay. You can play with your toys. Your hand's okay. I don't see any bruises. You're okay. Do you want to come sit with me for a minute? All right. You can sit with me for a minute. <laughs> what, you had to look back at me to see? <laughs> but, um, yeah. Yeah. Sony and Microsoft are releasing the PS4 Pro and the Xbox Series, not Series, Xbox One X. Those were pointless machines. They were pointless because they didn't do anything new other than say, hey, you can see your stuff in 4K now. That was it. Be careful. <laughs> well, no, this is, this is not a she. This is a this is a little boy, but he's got a lot of hair. Um, <clears throat> but when they did that, it's just like you created this. And this is where a lot of people got stuck on. We need better hardware, better hardware, better hardware. But that better hardware didn't improve anything. 
other than how budgets went up. Oh no, I could I can't blame you for not knowing, especially with the fact that his face is going in and out very uh boy, let go. Put it. I I still need to be viewable. I still need to be viewable, sir. <laughs> He's having fun. Uh, I can't blame you on that, especially since you can't really see his face fully or what he's wearing because he's got his like Spider-Man shirt on. And I'm wearing Batman, even though... What are you doing? I swear, you, you just like being on camera. <laughs> All right, you get you feel better now? You want to get down and go play? All right, there you go. JJ, put your feet down. Now my, now my son's trying to take over the show. Put your feet down. <laughs> really? You don't have to be on camera. They know of your existence. <sighs> now you're climbing on me? He wrapped my arms around him and climbed on me. Um... Getting back onto my train of thought with the Xbox One X and PS4 Pro. I I was one of those people when those those machines was announced. I was upset. And not upset because they were making the machines, but I was upset because I knew it wasn't going to do anything any different. That's what ticked me off. I was like, what's the point of these machines if there's not better AI running them or, and it doesn't improve gameplay in any way, shape, or form? What's the point of these machines? I even had a whole rant about PS4 Pro, but what I would have said, what I said about the PS4 Pro in that video would also have applied to Xbox One X. But yeah, those machines were released because no one knew what Nintendo was doing with the with the Switch. No one really knew, and it was it was kept really well, kept under wraps really well at the time. So, and that's that's another reason why people will try to lump the switch into uh, lump the switch into eighth generation with the Wii U, because Microsoft and Sony did refreshes to their platforms, but Nintendo never did. They didn't do a refresh to their platform because of what everybody else did. They just made a new platform, and it, it's a weird argument to go ahead and say, "Hey, well, this machine's." eighth generation along with the previous machine but somehow ps sony still wins eighth generation like y'all 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 got your wires twisted up whichever generation the switch falls into nintendo has won that generation like you can't have it both ways <laughs> but it's clearly ninth generation because it follows their eighth generation and their timeline was four to six years. So it followed their eighth generation home platform, as well as their eighth generation handheld. Whichever one you want to say it comes after, it still follows an eighth generation machine. Yeah. And on top of that, it doesn't use any of the stuff that the Wii U uses, and you can't use any of its stuff on the Wii U without some sort of modding or hacking. But that, that's a whole argument that I've already done multiple times over. Uh, but being back back towards the actual subject, gaming being in a rut is just people's boredom. Or social media boredom. Because then you'll have these people go tell other people, oh yeah, gaming's in a rut. Even though there are still plenty of new games that are going to be coming out in the coming months. A lot of them smaller budgets and indie titles but there are still a lot of games coming out in the coming months. And if you can't find something that's enjoyable among that stuff that's coming out, look at your backlog and go start eating through that backlog. Start playing through that backlog. I mean, me, my, I'm myself. I just finished. I finished beating unicorn overlord this past weekend. And then I 100 percented it in the middle of this week because that game was so good to me i wanted to 100 it 
So I did. But that's one of the few games I would ever do that for. I don't typically 100% any game. And I 100% this with no guides, which was the hard part, <laughs> which is why it took me, I think I was I was at 140 hours complete to completely 100% that game. And it took me a really long time to do that. But I, I enjoyed it. And I'm going to be... I was having trouble deciding on what I'm going to go through next because I also want to play through the Phoenix Wright trilogy since I have it. And I'm like, I have so much stuff to play. My biggest problem right now isn't that I feel like there's a rut. My biggest problem is I feel like I have too much. (laughs) I have too much to sit down and be able to concentrate on anything. So that's why I'm like, over the last couple of years with all the stuff that was releasing, and how often it was releasing, how fast it was releasing. You mean to tell me you can't find something to play? You can't find something to play. Now, if you're under the situation where I am, where you just have too much, that's not a rut. That's not a rut. That means you have too much. You are ha- you are having you are having trouble making a decision. <laughs> like that's a whole different thing. A rut means that there's a there's a complete drop and things are are screwed in a sense. But having multiple options does not create a rut. Having too many options doesn't create a rut. Uh what are you doing? No, you can't put that over here. Take that back. I don't want I do not want you to mix your toys up with my stuff. Mm-mm. Keep your toys, take them back to your toy chest, put them in there. <laughs> oh hold on Trinell. uh this may be me with my tinfoil hat on but this is why i like nintendo platforms for the gimmicks fresh new ways to play i get excited when nintendo experiments how we approach games i mean i could agree with that i agree with that just like i i agree i would agree with uh if if, if he was on here right now i would agree with uh with Jack about like getting into VR because VR is a different way to play video games. VR. Uh, people hate it on the Wii U. People hate it on this machine. Well, not this machine because this is a, obviously a part of the machine. But people hate it on Wii U. And a lot of the stuff that's in Wii U is in VR. And people love VR. I don't know how I caught that. No, you are not doing that again. You almost hit me with your little toy helicopter. But people people seem to love VR. People are getting, like, not everybody, obviously. But people love VR, but all you're wearing is this strapped to your face. That's what VR is, is this strapped to your face. Because it does the same thing. <laughs> and, and people people don't get that. It's this strapped to your face. Well, where do I have a nunchuck up here? I don't think I do. I don't think I have a nunchuck up here. But while you're using two controllers like this, or one of these, that's it. That's what VR is. It it literally gives you two extra axes. Which motion controls what this does, but it's not stuck to your face. You just have to look at a different screen. <laughs> and people were complaining about being in a rut with gaming, but then complained, yeah. "Little girl, why are you chewing on my game cases? Let's not let's not do that. Okay, let's not do that. One, that's not good for your teeth, and two, that's not good for my packages." <laughs> But people complain about being in a rut right now where you have companies making devices to do what the Wii U and the 3DS did, but they're charging you $700 plus to do the same thing. Yes, you you have a higher resolution. (laughs) Whoop-dee-doo. But you're not adding anything. You're not making it more special. All you're doing is upscaling it. That's it. That's it. 
And we have so many people saying that they miss the Wii U now. Didn't all y'all dog walk this console? Trash on it. Dog pilot. Say Nintendo needed to go third party. Say Awada needed to be fired from his job. People dogpiled on the system and didn't play it. There are people who people who hated Star Fox Zero, and you see this machine that does dual screen and copies the Wii U and the 3DS. And what's the first game that you see people playing on it? Star Fox Zero. So you mean to tell me? Sorry, those are Dragon Balls. I was trying to move. You mean to tell me now this game is worth the time of day? Why is it? See, I can get some stuff to come in clear and others don't. But this game is now worth the time of day. It's now worth the time of day when you have a machine that's tiny that you are charged more than double the price for one Wii U to be able to play this. And if gaming is in a rut, guess who, guess what y'all create, what happened, how, bleh, tongue tied. If gaming is in a rut, how did we get to that rut? You want to know how we got to that rut? By people shutting down different ideas, different ways to play, and shutting down the idea of using multiple screens in gaming. Which is weird when you think about it because so many people, so many people have multiple monitor setups on their PCs. I have three on mine. I currently have three monitors set up on my PC. So many people hated on the idea of using multiple screens to game. Now everybody's for it because a $700 device is copying someone else's stuff. Seven plus hundred dollar device, depending on how much uh, storage you purchase with it. And, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go on that, <laughs> that little rant there because I wasn't expecting to. But if you guys want different stuff in gaming, that means when a new idea comes out, you actually have to wholeheartedly give yourself to utilizing and playing in that idea. You have to give yourself the room to actually experience that idea. And people crap on the Wii because of the waggle. You mean to tell me you can't keep a, a steady arm? You don't know how to perform a swing of your arm without it going like this? You don't know how to aim down sights with a controller? Like taking the zapper here. You don't know how to do this? Do y'all not know how to do these things? Are y'all incapable of adjusting to new styles of play? Because if you're not, then why are you complaining that stuff is starting to get boring? Oh, no, no, no. If you're not, then that's why you're complaining things are getting boring. Sorry, I got my words mixed up. If you're not capable of learning how to enjoy new gameplay varieties or gimmicks to play video games, then, yeah, and that's another reason everything is feeling the same to you and everything's feeling like it's in a rut because you're not open to learning or playing with different styles of play. Again, I am. I'll play with the PlayStation controller. I'll play with the Sega Genesis controller a Sega Saturn controller, a 3DO controller, a Neo Geo controller, N64, GameCube, Wii, Wii U. I will play with any type of controller as long as I can identify what I'm supposed to be able to do. Because they're not complicated if you take the time to learn. But again, that's me. I, I'm starting to feel like I'm more rare of a gamer than I originally thought because <laughs> I thought I was, I thought I was just running the mill. 
your everyday gamer who's open to playing and trying out a bunch of different stuff. Oh, I didn't. I was looking at the, <laughs> the zapper. I'm like, man, something's not sitting there. Like, no, it was just me. It was me. <laughs> so I said it before and I'll say it again. Resident Evil 4 Wii edition spoiled me with motion controls. I outright refused to go back with, because of how intuitive controls were. I I understand. That's why I like games like The Conduit and Conduit 2, and I liked Call of Duty on the Wii because you you could aim and shoot. You could actually aim at yourself and do the shoot shooting, and if and it felt better because you could move your body and you naturally your natural movements are actually quicker than using twin stick. They are much quicker than using twin stick. The only difference is some people overcompensate and get too hyped in into the moment, but your natural movements are better than twin stick. And you cannot convince me otherwise. I'm like, and even, even without, even without direct motion controls, if it has gyro, I would definitely prefer that over normal motion controls. Because again, gyro helps with, helps with speeding up. If you're going to do twin stick, if you're going to force me into twin stick, then I want gyro to be able to assist with the speed issue. It, it's only a fair thing. And that's why I, I get ticked off with Microsoft. Like, why are y'all not releasing any controls of the gyro? You're the only ones that don't have it now. You're literally the only ones. But nobody's talking about that. Nobody in the, in the bigger picture is talking about that. We're talking about standardized controllers. Microsoft is missing a feature that the other platforms have. Why is nobody on them about that? But uh, but, uh I should probably get off my soapbox, though. <laughs> I think I've been up here long enough. Throat's drying out. Need a little bit of a... <laughs> oh, man. And I got 22... Firstly, thank you for everybody that's jumping in to watch this or listen to me, L- listen to my incoherent ranting. Uh, I do apologize that I get sidetracked, but that's just me. Can't help it. Part of who I am. Uh, you either got to be here for it or, or not. And thankfully, a good deal of y'all are here for it. Uh- <laughs> Saw the title of the live and I had to chime in. I'm conflicting on if there are no good games out right now or if there are good games and I'm not doing my proper research and seeking good games. Nah, you you know what? That's that's credible and that's partly what I was talking about. There's not... See, people don't realize when there are not a lot of big titles out, there are other smaller titles that are still interesting and potentially really good games. I got several of them right now. I have several of them right now that I plan on digging into. And especially right now where all these different sites are having sales, you got Target, Best Buy, Amazon, and even the different storefronts for the the game consoles or on PC, the multiple different launchers, they all are having different sales. All you have to do is look. And if if you know like a game is like you know what type of game you're interested in, just do a general search for the different types of games that you like. Um, maybe even on just like doing a quick Google or Bing search because Bing will give you good results. Um, just do what you can. Just do what you can uh, to check into seeing what's out there. It really depends on what you're interested in, but there's a there are good games coming, and there are good games out now. It's just a lot of them aren't the popular ones, so people don't hear about them. Hey, yo, Grunt, what's up? Uh, what the? I mean, look, you looking for it? Actually, I'm kind of interested in my that myself. But if that's the one that you're looking forward to, and you know that you're gonna like that, again. That's more reason to to actively look for stuff that that would be similar to it. Or if you don't want to just run into a bunch of the same stuff, just other stuff that gives you that feeling of, oh, man, I'm interested. 
uh, Dark Void, Dark Void, how can you be late for something you didn't know was coming? <laughs> like, you can't be late for something you didn't know was coming. But that that's that's nonsense, man. You just you look, you just made it to the club when you made it to the club. Just because people was already here don't mean you late. You arrived at your time. <laughs> oh man, my sense of humor needs work. Uh is it okay? Can we do voice chat on Discord? Um well, I'm thinking. I have to figure I would have to figure out how to get voice chat. Like if you wanted to join in the stream, I have to figure out how to get voice chat from Discord to uh slide into what I'm doing with StreamYard. I'll probably have to experiment with that first cuz I don't want to try to set it up and then people can't hear what you're saying and then I have to relay it multiple times cuz that'll just get annoying for everybody. <laughs> so, but that that is that that is something I need to consider. That is something I need to consider doing. So thank you for giving me that idea. Um, so I'm I'm gonna test, I'm gonna test that. I am definitely gonna test that. Cause that 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 would be something that would be something nice to do for if people don't want to be because if for me to let someone in on StreamYard, I have to share out the link. And sometimes that's a good idea, sometimes it's not. <laughs> so I have to be careful about that. But Discord would probably be a good thing to do. Oh, norm normally when I was are you talking about like uh like for streaming? Normally we we would be on uh StreamYard. That's normally what all of us have been using. Before that, we were using uh Skype and either recording it or streaming it through something like uh obs but currently for the most part it's been stream yard well girl what are you doing why are you trying to sneak to my games again you can't play them <laughs> You're try, trying to slide by and get to my games uh, yeah we we do stream yard for uh winging the podcast the thing is with stream yard because if if you're if you have like the membership with StreamYard, you can let other people run the same stream. It's more it's a website. It's not really an app. They don't. I mean, you can use the website from your phone because I've done that multiple times myself. I was actually doing that for like the last year because I didn't have my PC set up properly. But yeah, that's that's what we've been doing. And and if you, like I said, if you have the membership for StreamYard. You can allow other people who join you in stream to stream simultaneous simultaneously with you. No, you are not. Well, girl, you are not taking my dag on games. Leave Donkey Kong Country alone. Leave my tropical freeze in place, please. Thank you. D Don't growl at me. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, because but if if Google wouldn't have killed hangouts on air i'd still be using that but I, I don't have that choice and, and hangouts on air would be easier because i could just give you the link to the thing and then close out that link but with Streamyard, i can't do that <laughs> so i was like uh it, it, it is a little touchy um but if you don't mind if if you don't mind jumping in like this you don't necessarily have to be on camera either uh because i wasn't on camera for like i said like a year um uh. no i oh, know i'm a definite i'm definitely thinking about doing the discord thing because that would also allow me to let people who are listening in that just might not be able to because i can only do a limited number of people being on the stream at the same time shush but in discord i could have additional people who can't be on the stream jump in so it kind of it kind of would work out if i if i figure that out yes you wanted to look at look, you wanted to see yourself there you are there you are pretty little girl <laughs> whose face keeps getting fogged out like you're a horror theme character <laughs> okay you good now Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, when I'm streaming on uh, X or Twitter, whatever Musk wants to call it, that I'm also using StreamYard because I can do multi-streaming. So it 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 ends up running running into you end up running into being able to do it very easily through uh, StreamYard. But that again, that's if you take care of dealing with the membership. I mean, you can do it for free for like one platform at a time. But if you want to multi-stream, then you have to pay for the pay for the little membership thing, which I took care of during tax time. So I'm covered for the year, which is why I'm I'm streaming more because I wanted to stream more, but I didn't want to be limited in how often or how much I could stream. So and doing it with OBS while it was doable, some of the things I wanted to do, I couldn't. Like setting up the stream, if I'm trying to title everything, OBS only lets you title one source, which would mean I would have to go ahead and do each individual one. Yeah, I can invite you in. I just have to send you the link. Like that's that's basically how it was. I would like if I I could send like the link. I'm, I'm not sending it out publicly, but I could send out like a link in like a group chat or like a, a chat or something like an individual DM. I'm more than willing to do that. But I just won't do it publicly because the last time I did that, and that was well before StreamYard, like the last time I did that, I had people hopping in and out of a stream that they weren't supposed to be in. So, and because I don't want to do that, I'm just being real careful. <laughs> but um, for like, because especially like these, I'm normally just going to do them by myself. But if someone's willing to jump in while I'm while I'm live and wants to be part of that conversation, I have no problem with that. More more so it is when I want people as a group is usually when I'm doing the game idea foundry talk, which I'm still planning to bring back because I want to do that as part of my Thursday night rotation. So again, anybody interested, I'm more than willing to bring people on. Just just uh I'm just trying to explain everything. I know that's not necessarily what this particular discussion was about. Um but I'm again, and, and with stuff like this, I'm never against hearing opposing viewpoints, just so people know. I'm not against hearing opposing viewpoints. I just ask that people are respectful. That's about it. <laughs> like, that, that's literally it. All I ask is that you're respectful. Don't come at me and say personal stuff, and I won't, I won't come at you and say personal stuff. That's it. All I'll ever ask. Um, but man, I didn't. I didn't plan on being on this long, uh, but being getting sidetracked is easy for me. Um, <clears throat> but I think I've said all I really have to say on the matter. Um, if anybody's got anything they want to want me to relay through the chat system on any of the platforms, because even on Twitter, I can see what you're saying. <laughs> what you don't have to apologize look i was probably going to run over an hour anyway because i get sidetracked way too easy i get i get sidetracked in conversations so easy if you say if we're talking about pretzels and somebody mentions that there's a piece of flavored pretzel i'll go off on a tangent talking about pieces before we get back to talking about pretzels <laughs> what are you doing <clears throat> Uh 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 uh. None of my none of my switch controllers are meant to be in your little hands. Nope nope nope. My son just rolled up behind me, tried to snatch a controller, and tried to run. He was going run with my stuff, little thief. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, any anything anybody want me to to quickly highlight real quick or a quick thing you got to say? Because otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and shut it down. Because my child here is climbing all over me. <laughs> really? really? <laughs> it turned me back? He's like, no, you need to be looking at them, not me. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so the, uh, the ending of this is gaming is not in a rut. Gamers attitudes are. And until they change their attitudes about how they view gaming, anytime that there's not a bunch of hype announcements, they will feel like there's a rut. I think I think that that sums it up pretty decently. (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Look, go ahead and do that and, and hit me up on Twitter or something, and we can always plan something out. Trust me, we can always plan something out. This is, I like I, I mean, most of my nights are free, but I just don't do a bunch of. I don't do a bunch of podcasts on the other nights, just because I don't want to step on some little girl. The toy bin did not do anything to you. <laughs> I don't want to just step on what other people are doing or cross strings against them. So I, I typically. All right, I get it. You want me to wrap up. <laughs> but um Are you trying to mimic me? Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my son. My son is very much like me. <laughs> but yeah, um we can definitely go ahead and set up to do do a bunch of discussions. <laughs> Because again, most of my evenings are free. So if anybody wants me to talk about something with them, you just got to let me know. Like, let me know ahead so I can make sure that my wife knows and she doesn't think I'm just trying to bounce out on her and leave her with the kids, even though I don't mind having my kids with me while I, while I do this. Um, but again, just let me know. Otherwise, uh, I, again, getting sidetracked. Apologize, everybody, but that's just me. <laughs> but otherwise I'm going to go ahead I'm wrapping this up because I do have to deal with like dinner and stuff for them so I'm going to go ahead and do that but thank you guys very much for listening in for watching for those that were here uh, I very much enjoyed having this discussion and going over it with everybody if there's anything you'd like me to talk about or any discussions that you think I should talk about go ahead drop them in the comments at any time uh, I'll consider it Otherwise, thank you very much and peace out.